If you don't live under a rock and you can afford plane tickets, you may have noticed something in the news in regard to Boeing specifically lately. There are multiple investigations going on, one from the National Transportation Safety Board, FAA safety audits, and then, of course, the reopening of a criminal probe by the U.S. Justice Department. Boeing, the company that manufactures a lot of the planes that people fly on currently at commercial airports, in and out, you know, to and fro, whatever you may have it. This massive company is trying to save costs after their big bailout during COVID-19 back in 2020. They retired the massive 747. Truly a sexual big chungus in the airline world. There's nothing as beautiful as 747. And in spite of the 747 being a pretty legendary airplane, there are so many problems now that very few people feel safe flying in this day and age. Real big developments impacting the Boeing 737 MAX 9 air aircraft. This after a mid-air emergency forced an Alaska Airlines flight to land just minutes after taking off. In spite of my irrational fears and the irrational fears of many people, aviation is relatively safe, okay? Especially when you compare it with driving on the road. There are a bunch of people die every single year from driving in cars and crashes and tires falling off. The first dumbass looking plane made from fucking balsa wooden paper was made by these brothers called the Wright Brothers out in North Carolina. And as every school child learns, the Dayton, Ohio duo became the first people in history to successfully pilot an engine powered airplane. And it's a dude <laughs> lying on his stomach, flying through the air. That's some 1800s type shit right there, guys, for sure. Early 1900s, whatever, turn of the 20th. After this, another iteration, potentially even worse than the first, would have a man sitting inches away from a spinning propeller. What was wrong with these people? I guess it beats fucking tuberculosis, though, and dysentery and all that. A genuine death trap that could barely maneuver itself. Wow. Every time they went up in this motor-driven airplane, they were risking their lives. This is something that cannot be overemphasized. That's kind of like the beginning, okay? And there have been so many bad ideas in the aviation world from the very beginning that they couldn't imagine what we're working with now. The creations that touch the sky that kiss God's God's undercarriage especially when they were inventing shit like this what is that that's not gonna work and in spite of all this in spite of learning whatever whatever we have these giant houses that can fly through the sky now evolution always works in reverse and time is a flat circle I think I don't know I've been told that before cutting costs will always be victorious and we will always return to balsa wood and paper you younglings may not remember this but there was a plane that could fly from New York to London in three and a half hours it completely dominated the skies it was called the Concorde. It was a joint venture between two European countries to develop a plane unlike any other, to transport passengers at unbelievable speeds, and as a result, bring the world closer together. It allowed our friends from across the pond to visit America in the same amount of time that it takes to fly from Dulles to DFW, or to drive basically a quarter of the way through Texas. Now, with our incredibly epic modern technology, it takes about seven hours to fly from New York to London. Once again, it's evolution reverse. In 1969, this insanely epic and very ugly airplane made its first successful flight, flying at 1,354 miles an hour, twice the speed of sound. I guess that's Mach 2. I don't really know. Also, the way that this thing looks, I said it was ugly. It looks like it came straight from a sci-fi movie. It, it, it seems like what people think airplanes would look like back in the Orville Redenbacher days. <laughs> Since pilots couldn't see out of the plane because of angled landing, engineers put together a solution. The Concorde featured a droop snoot. Droop snoot? Yeah, the, the snoot would droop. The snoot droop. I'd rather have that ugly bitch fucking with its proboscis be flying around rather than these ugly bitches with their dumbass. Thing. At least their fucking doors don't fall off on the Concorde. But these things are affordable and they're simple. But they're also pathetic. Also, you guys may be forgetting, you used to be able to smoke on airplanes, which was completely baller and very sick. And we need to bring that back as soon as possible. Smoking was chill. They had chefs serving full course meals. It was amazing. Normally people complain about how bad the airline food is. I, I will attest in this case, that was not true. This was one of the best meals I ever had. It worked beautifully. Uh, you know, a normal French meal takes two and a half, three hours. Well, by the time dinner was over, 
we were here. And now I've been told you get served a cracker in a cup. It was retired on the 24th of October, 2003 and put into history museums. That ugly bastard was never to be seen from again. So why was it retired? <sighs> the reasons go on and on. A couple of reasons very valid one reason it's supersonic so it makes a lot of explosive booming sounds whenever it goes anywhere i don't know if you live near a military base i live near a few military bases and every now and then some some fellas some some hot shots will fly over and it sounds like a fucking bomb going off and it shakes shit knocks stuff off the walls in the 60s the air force ran a test of sonic booms over oklahoma city and residents reported hundreds of damaged windows and noise disturbances all that meant limiting supersonic flight to above the ocean. There would be no New York to LA Concorde. That's part of what quashed the American supersonic experiment with Boeing. On top of the supersonic booms, there was also a huge fatality accident in the year of 2000 on J uh, July 25th. A Concorde was damaged while taking off and it resulted in 113 fatalities. And then this, a year later, boom, and boom, the aircraft market kind of probably maybe let's try a different approach to the aircraft market people don't really want to fly on extremely fast supersonic planes that crash and blow up and then also you've got but while both tragedies did affect concord there are only a couple of pieces of the fundamental challenges for the plane more reasons would be damage to the ozone layer apparently supersonic jets if there was hundreds of thousands of them Flying around, it would burn up the ozone 10 times quicker. I'm not even sure if that's true. That's just what people said. Noise concerns were paired with environmental concerns. Uh, there will be severe environmental damage to the ozone layer. The plane's high flight pattern made scientists think its exhaust gas could be more threatening to the ozone than normal jets. I don't know anything about the ozone layer. I know there's a hole in it, or at least there was, or something. People don't talk about the ozone layer anymore. I'm not sure the science, but on top of that too, it, the cost, it, it was pretty, pretty expensive to make these bad boys. All the managerial, directorial, executive aspects of businesses are always controlled by these geniuses who all have the exact same idea, which is to make as much money as possible all the time, no matter what, and boom, Concord doesn't exist anymore. On top of that, the Airbuses could travel much further. You know, they just, it was more efficient overall to uh, rely on, on them fellas. And the highest price seats for the Concord cost around $12,000. There wasn't a lot of avail availability there. Now back to Boeing. Boeing has also had some crashes. It doesn't just specifically begin and end at Concord. Boeing has had quite a few planes go down. The largest controversies regarding Boeing crashes are the October 9th, 2018 Lion Air Flight 610, which was a Boeing 737 MAX 8. 189 people were killed in the crash of Lion Air Flight 610. The March 10th, 2019 crash of Ethiopian Airline Flight 302, which was once again a Boeing 737 MAX 8. New 737 MAX 8 jetliner crashed today. And then the very recent January 5th, 2024, Alaskan Airlines Flight 1282 Boeing 737 MAX 9. Alaska Airlines is now grounding its entire fleet of Boeing 737 9 MAX planes after a terrifying trip on Friday. Alaska Airlines Flight 1282 had just taken off from Portland, Oregon when a section of its cabin ripped off, leaving a gaping hole, as you see right there in the jet, with more than 170 passengers on board. The first flight we mentioned, the 737 MAX 8 uh, Lion Air Flight 610 crashed after taking off from an airport in Indonesia after 15 minutes in flight, tragically killing all 189 people aboard. Not long after, the second flight, Ethiopian Flight 302, another Boeing 737 MAX 8, traveling from Ethiopia to Kenya, would crash in even less time than the Lion Air Flight 610. So what caused these crashes, these incredibly unfortunate events? Not user error, not a, a typical system malfunction. These planes crashed in a nose down dive into the fucking ground. Quite literally, they just went. It's terrible. The 737 Maxes were a bit different from their predecessors, the 737, in one way in particular that they had an MCAS system, the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. MCAS. It was designed for these extremely unusual maneuvers, situations that hopefully the plane would never get in. And to prevent the nose from getting too high, the system would move the stabilizer on the back of the plane to push the nose back down. The MCAS would take readings from the single angle of attack sensor on the aircraft and then make corrections that are determined to be needed. And then it would make those corrections. And that 
malfunction. And as a consequence of this angle of attack data error, the MCAS activated when it really shouldn't have. We'll ask a hypothetical question first so you can understand this. What if a pilot that was used to flying a 737 sat in the 737 MAX and wasn't used to this feature? What would they do? What would happen? Well, the plane would nosedive and crash, just like what happened in those two planes. And Boeing's CEO tried his best to explain why the company didn't tell 737 MAX pilots about the software system that contributed to those two fatal crashes. Another hypothetical question. What if there wasn't proper training on this new system that is meant to augment the plane's angle of attack? What if there wasn't training uh, that existed in any way for anyone to access, especially pilots of those airplanes? And now Boeing's focusing on pilot training, luckily, because Boeing omitted safety system details and minimized training for the 737 MAX pilots that were used to 737 planes. And the worst addition to the hypothetical that is no longer a hypothetical is that the Lion Air pilots were looking at their handbook when the plane crashed. Now I'll ask another hypothetical question. What if the single sensor, the angle of attack sensor, was faulty or had a false reading? What would happen then? Two minutes into the flight, based on faulty data from the AOA sensor, MCAS kicked in and began pushing the nose down. If this system can control the entire plane and the pilots don't know how to use this system because they're not taught how to use it, and the sensor's been flagged 216 times to the FAA for being faulty what would happen then nothing good here's another hypothetical what if pilots couldn't actually override the system that determined a nose down dive was the best course of action for the mcas system uh it'd probably crash and that my friends is exactly what happened how about one more hypothetical what if boeing downplayed the significance of the mcas system during the process of certifying the 737 max for use in commercial airlines what if that happened guys that'd be terrible if that happened oh wait that did happen! So we threw some hypothetical spaghetti at the wall and hypothetically every single fucking noodle stuck, bro. It's a full on conspiracy theory wet dream. It's real though. It's not a dream. It's actually the reality. So at best, this all points to Boeing being very overconfident in their new system and criminally negligent at worst, or maybe a combination of both equally. So at least after these two horrible disasters, there weren't any more issues with Boeing 737 MAX planes, were there? Well, no guys. In January of 2024, a Boeing 737 MAX 9 going from Oregon to California had a door break off completely after takeoff because the door plug was improperly installed. The National Transportation Safety Board says right after the plane took off, the door plug depressurized. They're analyzing the plug, saying they believe it holds clues to what could have caused the accident. That one was a bit more recent, not as bad as the MCAS, but still a you know, borderline disaster, especially for Boeing. In this incident, injuries were minor and there were no deaths considering it was so soon after takeoff, but still, the plane did experience explosive decompression. The boy's shirt was sucked off him and out of the plane, and his mother was holding on to him. I, I saw half of his body was getting sucked out, and then I was like, oh my God. And I look over and there's a hole on the side of the plane. And had the plane been further along into the flight, it would have been absolutely catastrophic. I would love to see what percentage of people on this flight will ever fly ever again. Probably a lot of them. Probably a surprising amount. I know I wouldn't. I just wouldn't in general. Maybe this one was just old. No, it was fresh off the line. It's brand new, but it was made of fucking Legos. Or at least the door was, it seemed like. People on Twitter are making fun of Boeing in this plane specifically. So it's a, it's a, you know, it's pretty scary being on a plane that's quite literally falling apart. Now, how would Boeing respond to these incidents, guys? How would Boeing respond? Just how you'd think. After the crash and loss of everyone aboard the Lion Air Flight 610, Boeing put out a statement. They expressed their deepest and most heartfelt sympathies to the families of those aboard at the start. And then they said that safety is a core value at Boeing. Clearly. Later, they indicated that this crash was a result of pilot error, stating that the day before, pilots were able to disable the nose down trim. <sighs> it's, it's basically saying, oh man, it's a bummer this happened to you guys. I'm really sorry about that. We love safety. And also the other pilots that fly these airplanes were able to deal with our faulty sensors. I guess these guys flying that plane just weren't as good as them. So 
you know, not our fault though. It would be like if Tesla's autopilot just caused cars to drive full speed into brick walls exclusively. And then Elon Musk went on Twitter to say, well, it didn't do that yesterday, even though it kept trying to. So it's like, I guess the driver just didn't know how to deal with that. After this, it seems like Boeing realized that this statement sort of missed the mark. So when the second airplane crashed in the exact same way, they kept their updated statement very, very, very brief. In fact, beyond the similar initial statement expressing their sympathies, the only sentence that they write is basically them saying that one of their technical teams is going to the crash site to assist in an investigation and probably be really sad just seeing what they're responsible for, you know, the deaths of a lot of innocent people. People weren't happy with that one. Maybe if you give them five years, we'll see how they can better respond to a controversy when they come under scrutiny again for a door ripping off a fucking airplane mid-flight. The CEO of Boeing, a genius, said in a CNBC interview, How did an unsafe airplane fly in the first place? Because a, a quality escape ha occurred. Can you because explain what that means? Occurred. What is a quality escape? I think that's the description of what people are finding in their inspections. Um, uh, anything that could potentially contribute to an accident. What? What's a quality escape? What are you talking about? Is he saying quality escape the planes? Because that feels pretty accurate. Is he saying he's looking for a quality escape because he's uncomfortable in this line of questioning? Is he cracking a joke saying that the plane's emergency exit door blowing off made for a quality escape from the plane? What is this fucking idiot saying? Sorry, this guy. Now we could speculate endlessly here, but I think we can absolutely and easily get a grasp that this fella is unable to make a, a a solid public statement in regard to his plane fucking exploding and, and endangering a bunch of people that pay money to be safe and travel and see their families and we know this extra big time judging by the way he would talk about the lion air and ethiopian airlines flights after taking over as ceo david calhoun told the newspaper that pilots from indonesia and ethiopia don't have anyone near the experience that they have here in the u.s he added the plane maker made a fatal mistake by assuming those flying the aircraft would immediately counteract software failures, which played a role in both accidents. So basically, you know, Indonesian and Ethiopian pilots are bozos, taking L's constantly. It's not Boeing, it's not the airplane with the faulty sensors, it's, it's the pilots. Oh, okay. But in an interview from a couple months ago, Calhoun said that this is a mistake that can never happen again. It should never happen again, can never happen again, but how exactly are they going to prevent this uh... What happened is exactly what you saw. A fuselage plug blew out. That's the mistake. It can never happen. We're not allowed that to sure. happen. Even as recently as this month, there was another Boeing plane that had a fucking wheel fall off during takeoff. Boeing and United Airlines want to know why a wheel fell off of a plane headed for Japan. Wanting to know is the first step. Video shows the tire falling just after takeoff right onto the ground. It fell onto a parking lot and crushed some cars because airplane wheels are really big. They're not like those small wheels on other vehicles. <laughs> They're gigantic. No one was hurt, but the wheel that plummeted to the ground did extensive damage to at least two cars in an employee parking lot. The aircraft is built with six tires on each of its two main landing struts, and United says it is designed to land safely with missing or damaged tires. Yeah, it gets worse though. It gets so much worse. Two months ago, a Boeing 747 cargo plane Atlas Air Flight 5Y095 had to make an emergency landing after an engine caught fire. The Atlas Air cargo flight sparked after it took off from Miami International Airport. Three years ago, a Boeing 777 had an engine fire over Colorado. And two weeks ago, there was another engine fire on a United Airlines flight uh, shortly after takeoff. It was a terrifying few moments caught on video at altitude. And then how about another? recent example, a Boeing 787 dropped altitude rapidly and resulted in 50 people sustaining injuries after fucking hitting their heads on the ceiling of the plane after it started shaking strongly for unknown reasons. Video from inside Chilean flight Lantum 800 capturing the aftermath of some harrowing moments. On board the flight from Sydney to Auckland, New Zealand, 50 injured passengers and crew members. It is unbelievable how many issues there are with planes due to low quality parts or just improper installation. How the fuck is this happening, dude? It, it makes sense with like cars, right? Because they're not flying. They don't fly. When something goes wrong with a car, you just pull over 
and that's it. When an airplane, you can't, you, you crash and everyone dies. Everyone dies. The systemic negligence at Boeing is kind of fucking disturbing in all, in all honesty. It's been around for a long time. Nine years ago, Al Jazeera went undercover with hidden cameras into a Boeing manufacturing site. And what they uncovered was pretty wild. Our investigation finds Boeing altered its own quality standards. They're shortchanging the engineering process to meet a schedule. We uncover a whistleblower fired as he fought for safety. There's no doubt there's bad repairs going out the door on the 787. We go behind closed doors onto the factory floor to reveal a world Boeing keeps secret. Now functions are reported to managers who don't do anything or they just do band-aid fixes like sealing doors with fucking Dawn dish soap. When they ask the people working on the planes if they would fly in them, many say no. Did you fly on one? Um, no. You won't fly on one. Did you fly on one of these planes? Did you fly on one of these motherfuckers? Did you fly on one of these? Yeah, I'm really sketchy. Sketchy? There's just parts sitting on the floor, by the way, just in case you're wondering, they're not stored in any kind of uh, hermetically sealed. They just don't care. I kind of imagine working at a Boeing manufacturing plant is kind of like building something with Legos and just taking all the numbered packs, throwing them all together in a big five gallon bucket and then shitting in it and then mixing them all up, putting Dawn dish soap and trying to build the, uh, you know, whatever your, your, whatever your Legos are supposed to build that way. On top of this, Boeing also claims to be continuously losing more and more money. Hey, how about just don't exist anymore? If that's the case, just, just don't exist anymore. Especially when you start cutting corners to make profit because you're not making money. In spite of reporting more revenue each year, like every gigantic business does, they have more losses. Not as many as 2022 this year, but still they're reporting a lot of losses. I'd say they should expect more after that fucking door fell off. That would damage my consumer confidence, TBH. I wouldn't fly ever again if that happened to me or near me, or I just wouldn't do it anyways, because I'm a big, big baby boy. And it seems as a result, they're cutting corners continuously and suffering because of it. Airplanes are a serious business and they shouldn't be any less safe than they are just because of like money, right? That doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense. Maybe make the interiors really shitty or something, like wood. Make the interiors wood, but make the planes actually fly though. I, that, how about that idea? A little cherry on top to this whole thing with flying, by the way, if you weren't a little bit, you know, if your consumer confidence wasn't damaged after this video, Pilots as well, they don't like flying in the planes. They rarely show up fucking sober. There was a Delta pilot recently given 10 months in jail for sh showing up intoxicated to work with a legal blood alcohol limit double of what's legal to drive. Double. I understand planes have autopilot and you can't really, you know, the computers help and stuff, but like you can't be flying a fucking plane. You can't get drunk in a Tesla either, you dumb bitch. John Barnett, a former Boeing employee, You'll probably be able to guess why soon he's a former Boeing employee stated to TMZ that the 737 problem is a Boeing problem. It's not just a 737 problem, it's a Boeing problem. The FAA is saying that the plane is now safe to fly. Uh, what do you say? One, this is not a 737 problem, it's a Boeing problem. Um, and I know the FAA's gone in and they've done due diligence and inspections to assure that the door plugs of the 737 are, are installed properly and the fasteners are torqued properly. But my concern is what's the rest of the airplane? What's the rest of the condition of the airplane? So they investigate door plugs, but they don't check the rest of the aircraft is what it's kind of seeming like with all these whistleblowers and all this lack of consumer confidence. John claims in 2012 that Boeing started removing inspection operations off of their jobs, leaving mechanics to buy off their own work. Back in 2012, Boeing started removing inspection operations off their jobs. So basically John's saying that this is a systemic thing and after his little interview with TMZ, he was found dead right before going to testify against Boeing. Boeing whistleblower John Barnett found dead in US with two gunshot wounds to the back of his head. Just kidding, I don't think that was, it was, it was he unalived himself, right? John made a bunch of horrible claims as to what Boeing is doing. He said, the manufacturing of parts of oxygen masks was 
they were rushed to fit loosely, which brought complications and a whole bunch of safety concerns behind the scenes. All that was glanced over. Among a thousand other fucking things that you could probably guess at this point, because when employees of Boeing are asked if they'd fly on their planes, Lots of them say no. 15 were asked, 10 said no. That's crazy. In conclusion, it's crazy that things have gotten so bad. Our top five exports, number one, oil. Number two, civilian aircraft parts. Number three, fucking gasoline. Number four, liquefied natural gas. Number five, passenger vehicles. There's a lot of corruption involved in all this stuff. And I'm probably gonna die because I made this video. No, I'm not, I'm just kidding. I'm not worried about that at all. It's just a joke. The reputation of Boeing is souring, and the people are losing confidence. Boeing was one of the most trusted names in aviation manufacturing, but it seems like those times are times gone.